brilliant start off pole position for the number 66, the red line KTM of Joel Irving. Puffs of two stroke smoke as uh, Ryan Saxby legs off the line on an RS racing Honda, but isn't able to get the brightest of starts. So he immediately set about cutting his way through the pack. Initially, though, Joel Irving had the advantage. Saxby running in fourth place. And then Saxby, number 76, rapidly cut his way through the pack and set about chasing down the race leader. And with this uh, very, very acute line into Druids, he took the lead. So the returning rejuvenated 38-year-old looking strong at the front, but Joel Irving responds. And uh, the 16-year-old chef decides it's time to put uh, a man old enough to be his dad in his place. And Saxelby then finds himself really fighting hard against the likes of Jason Neurive and Jordan Weaving. He's play, he finally gets back in front of them through to second place. Jordan Weaving moves through into third place. And at the front, a great result then for 16-year-old Joel Irving from home first in West Yorkshire on the red line KTM. He takes victory in the first race of 2014. The restart to the Pirelli National Superstock 1000 Championship. First race of the season here at Brands Indy. And another absolutely scorching getaway for the pole man, Danny Buchan, riding bike number 83 on the Qingdao WK Kawasaki. Everybody this time cleanly through Paddock Hill Bend with Jason O'Halloran's Honda showing strongly in second place. Danny Buchan pulls out a very strong early lead, but there's a fall and uh, resultant fisticuffs, actually, <laughs> between Robin Harms and Jess Trailer. And then the part-time racer, yes, the former champion, Glenn Richards, crashes out on the Paget's Honda. A big scrap develops behind the leader. Jossie Elliott is forced wide by Jason O'Halloran at Druids. O'Halloran now through into second place. Jenkinson, number 11, running in fourth place. And this battle will continue throughout as Philip Backlund squeezes past. And number three, the SMT Kawasaki, makes a fairly ragged move through into fourth. But a delightful, delighted Danny Buchan wins it for Qingdao WK Kawasaki. Ahead of O'Halloran's Honda, Elliott clings on to third place ahead of Backlund and Jenkinson. Great first race then for Danny Buchan. The first start of the Pirelli National Superstock 600 Championship. Brilliant getaway for the F, the FFZ Yamaha of Andrew Reid, the Osterman who put it on firmly on pole. And then a pile-up at Druids leaves some fluid on the deck and there's another multiple collision as the lads come out of Druids. Fortunately, everybody's all right as bikes spin themselves off into a makeshift car park and then, or bike park even, then we go again. And off the start line, Reid once again gets a scalding start and opens up an advantage at the front, leaving Law, Collier, Reid and the rest, Ride and the rest to scrap behind him. Initially, Mason Law has that second place. And then James Lodge begins to make his move through the pack. Tom Oliver is riding him hard at the back, but James just nicks through underneath Kyle Ryder as they go through Druid. And Lodge still has a fair gap ahead of him at that point as he drops down Graham Hill Bend on bike number seven. Behind him, Joel Collier makes a move, gets past Tom Oliver. And then this movement there by James Lodge for such a mild mannered lad, aggressive on the track, sits up Andrew Reid and comes across the line with a uh, lap to go in the lead. Then Lodge has to fend off Mason Law, which he does by a bike length across the line to take his first victory in Superstock 600. The second race of the weekend in the Ducati Tri-Options Cup and a great start for Dennis Hobbs from the middle of the front row of the grid, getting the better of Leon Morris off pole as they dive downhill. But Marty Nutt gets a flyer from the second row of the grid and the reigning champion quickly moves to the front on bike number one for Ducati Coventry JHP Racing. 
Not for long, though, because Leon Morris, the 2011 champion, is quickly into his stride on the Carl Cox Motorsport PNH Motorcycles Panigale. But he comes under threat from the newcomer to this particular game, the former Triumph Triple Champion and British Super Sport Cup winner, Rob Guyver from Raynham, Essex. He grabs the advantage on a track he loves on bike number 13, riding for high side motorcycles. And as Guyver begins to move away at the front, it's Leon Morris, Dennis Hobbs and Sean Neary in the fight for podium places with Martin Hook trailing in fifth place. A winner at Brands Hatch in previous occasions on 125 GP and Triumph Triples. Rob Guyver comfortably in the lead as the rest of them squabble for the rostrum points. And Guyver out of clear ways through Clark Curve, hits the chequered flag. A joyful victory then for Guyver, second time out in the Ducati Cup. Great victory, and that puts him third in the table. Off the start, uh, Tom Kahn didn't make the best of starts off pole position, but on the white machine, certainly the man who managed to get a deal together at the 11th hour, former runner-up Phil Atkinson launched his bike to the front and uh, the Declan's racing machine led the way up Halewood Hill and into Druids. It got fairly crowded behind him, it was the safest place to be out front, uh, but Mon Man making uh, on his Fro Systems backed bike and his dad backed bike, Sam Cox making a move early on on bike number 31 past Freddie Pett, the enormously tall lanky lad from Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Sam Cox made a move on Phil Atkinson, dropped inside him down Paddock Hill Bend and bend and took the lead. Then it was up to Freddie Pett to claw his way through past Atkinson and see if he could do anything about the leader. Uh, number 31, Sam Cox on the Sam Cox Racing Triumph, getting hassled by number 66, Freddie Pett, on the M40 Triumph, Dale's Racing 675. But this is exactly what Freddie was saying. He wasn't fast enough around Sector 3, the big sweeping area of the course. That's where Cox would get away from him. That's where it mattered. That's where Cox was able to seal his victory. And he did it in style. Freddie Peck challenged him, but never got close enough. Atkinson finished third, but a debut victory for Londoner Sam Cox. He was also always going to be fast and furious from the off because... 12 laps round here, well, you know, it's a 1.2 1, 1 mile circuit. Andy Peach, a dreadful start, just did not get the L&W Suzuki off the line and was boxed in, eaten up in actual fact by the rest of the pack. But Hegarty from pole position took the running on the word go, but was ch chased all the way by a charging Roger Lovelock and Aki Alto. At Paddock Hill Bend, he seized the opportunity, forced the BMW through, and there was no looking back, although Hegarty, in actual fact, a little bit out of shape after Lovelock's overtaking move, was a little bit unsettled. Settled. The Viennese, Austrian Grand Muller number 97, with Callum Lawson put up a brave fight, got past Kershaw, who's in the thick of the action, got himself into the points. Ben Bygrave and Justin Sharp upended it without injury. Bygrave at that point was underneath the capsule, but they very soon got him up. Hopefully, with no damage, it was on the grass. At the front, though, the battle raged between the BMW of Lovelock and the Suzuki of Sean Hegarty. And even at the closing run down to the flag, Hegarty had him lined up all the way, but couldn't do it. The BMW got the win. Great result for Lovelock. <laughs> 